Okay, so we are looking at a question on the correlation coefficient um, between US dollar between the average income and the carbon dioxide emissions for a variety of different countries. We the important thing to note here is we've got twenty four countries. We know that the correlation coefficient for the sample is zero point four four six. We talk about the sample correlation coefficient as R, and that's for the sample. When we start looking at the population, we're going to talk about rho is the correlation coefficient in the population. And what we're trying to do, this is called inferential statistics. What we're trying to do is trying to determine from the information from the sample whether or not there is correlation in the entire population. Okay, so we've got correlation coefficient. We know the significance level is 5%. And the important word here is is greater than zero. That allows us to form our hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is always going to be that the correlation coefficient in the population is zero. There is no real correlation between income and uh, carbon emissions. The alternative hypothesis can take one of three forms. It can either be that the correlation is less than zero, that the correlation is greater than zero, or that the correlation is not equal to zero, in which case we would have a two-tailed test. Here the question is very simple for us. It's greater than zero, so we're looking at rho is greater than zero. We then need to find the critical value for R. You can't do that on your calculator. The only way you can do that is looking at the tables which are given to you on page 37 of your formula booklets, the critical values for the correlation coefficient. Um, if you're only doing A-level, you're not doing further maths, um, ignore the right-hand side, which is the Spearman's correlation coefficient, and we're going to have a look here for where we're trying to look. Now, we know we're 5%, so we're 5%, which is up here. So we're looking in this column here. We're looking for N equals 24, so we're in the second column, and we are going to be looking for 24 in the second column, is going to be a critical value of 0.3438. So R critical equals 0.3438. Let's just draw a quick diagram. You don't need to do this, but just helps with our understanding. We're saying that R is centered around zero. What this is telling us, there's my zero, is that if you're 0.3438, if you got a value which is greater than 3438, so everything here, you would reject H0. If you were on the other side, if you were looking at uh, your alternative hypothesis being that there was negative correlation, you would have minus 0.3438, and you'd be looking for anything smaller than minus 0.3438. So here, we know that the correlation coefficient is 0.446. So 0.446... Is greater than 0.3438. So we're up here. Mr. So Daddy, this, clue, mean, Ms. this means that we can reject H0. Now be careful, with any hypothesis testing, that answer would not be good enough. We need to explain what it means in terms of the question. So go back to the question. Whether or not the product moment correlation coefficient for all countries is greater than zero, well, yes, we found that it is greater than zero, so therefore, PMCC is greater than zero. Or you could say something like, there is evidence, there is sufficient evidence that there is positive correlation between carbon emissions and income. Okay, we're now going to look at part B. Now, this is set out in quite a complicated way. Um, now, we're going to do part B first, fairly straightforward, and then go on to part C. So I'm going to do that over here. Excuse me for dotting around the page. Um, if we look at part B, here, the closer R is to 1, the closer the level of correlation. Just to remind you, if you've got a perfect linear correlation you would end up with r equals 1. So the closer r is to 1,
the better the correlation. And if it was negative correlation, obviously it would be the closer it is to negative one. OK, now, here it asks us to linearize an exponential function. So, we're going to start with this y equals ax to the n. So, I'm going to do that over here. We're going to start with y equals ax to the power of n. And what I'm going to do is to linearize it, I'm always going to start by taking logarithms of both sides. So, we're going to say log, and we're going to do base tens. I'm not going to write that in, you don't need to. Log of y equals log of ax to the n. Remember, you're taking logs of the whole, si the whole side. We're then going to use our rule of logarithms. So, log of y equals log of a times b is log a plus log b. So, log a plus n log x. OK, well, let's now compare that with what we've got here. So, here I'm told that c equals minus 1.82 plus 0.89m. I've just written that over here. c equals minus 1.82 plus 0.89m. But it tells us in the question that c is log base 10 of y. And m is log base 10 of x. So I'm going to just rewrite that in. And we've got log of y, which was c, is minus 1.82 plus 0.89 log x. OK, well, let's just compare the two different equations that we've got. So, I've got log y and log y. I've got log a over here and minus 1.82 over here. So, I can say the log base 10 of a equals minus 1.82. Here, I've got log x on both sides and I've got a coefficient n is 0.89. n equals 0.89. Sorry, this should be log base 10 of a. So, I know that log base 10 of a is minus 1.82, so a is going to be 10 to the power of negative 1.82, and I know n equals 0.89. Let's just work out then using our calculators what a is. So, I'm going to 10 to the power of negative 1.82 gives me an answer of 0 0.0151 and n equals 0 0.89. So, let's just finalise that by rewriting the equation as y equals 0.0151x to the power of 0 